G'day everyone, it's Mark here from Making Websites Easy and today we're going to talk about how to bring your website images to life with parallax effects. I'm going to show you how I took this image which by the way I downloaded for free and added some cool parallax effects to make it more dynamic. All I used was drag and drop software without any coding whatsoever. Just a simple technique to spice up your website pages. We're going to go through where we can download free images, how to split up your image into multiple layers, and then show you how to combine these layers with blur, scaling, and mouse tracking to give us the parallax effect. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, first things first, where can you download free images for your website? Head down to pixabay.com. Here, I simply searched for the keyword Mountain Snow Summit. I navigated through all the search results and eventually found what I was looking for. Click the free download button, select the highest resolution, and then click download. Next, we need to split this image into multiple layers. So I'm going to right click on this image and open it in the free image editing tool called GIMP. Here we'll separate the image into three layers. One for the background, one for the mountain, and then one for the foreground. I'm going to do this using the free select tool, which will allow me to cut out parts of the image into separate layers. And the first layer that I want to select and cut out is the mountain. And I'm going to do this by tracing over its outline. Once I'm done selecting the mountain part of the image, I'm going to float the image and then I'm going to place it in a new layer. And then we repeat the process for the foreground. Again, once selection is finished, we can separate it from the mountain layer by firstly floating the image and then moving it into a new separate layer. I'll also adjust the size of this layer to be the same size as the image. Then we can scale both the foreground and the background layer so that all the layers are overlapping just a little bit. And then we can export each layer into their own separate image. Alright, next step is to bring our images to life on our website. 
I'm going to be using WordPress with the Elementor Pro Website Builder plugin installed. Firstly, I'm going to add a new page and then set the template for this page to be the Elementor Canvas. First step is to add a section with a full width and a minimum height of 400 pixels. Then we add another section below it, also with full width, but with a viewport height of 130. Inside the section is a column whose padding we need to set to at 0. Next, we'll add an image component to the column. This will make up the background layer for our parallax effect. We'll set the image size to full, meaning the original size of the image, and then increase the width of the image to 130%. Next, we'll set the image to have absolute positioning and then adjust the horizontal and the vertical positions. All right, next we'll add the motion effects for this layer. We'll turn scrolling effects on and add blur to fade in gradually from the beginning of when the image appears on scroll until we've scrolled past about 90% of the image. And then we'll add effects to gradually scale up the image from when it initially enters the viewport until it exits. And then we'll add mouse tracking effects so the image moves in the opposite direction of the mouse. We can then proceed to add the next layer by duplicating this image and then uploading the image for Mountain 2. In a similar way, we'll adjust its horizontal and vertical positions And then we can adjust the motion effects to take into account that objects that appear closer to the viewer move relatively faster than objects that appear further away. Let's then duplicate this image so we can add our final layer, the foreground layer. Again, we can adjust the horizontal and vertical position. Adjust the motion effects accordingly. And then finally, we'll duplicate the first section that we created and move it to the bottom of the page. Okay, now it's time to take a look at how our parallax effect is shaping up. Awesome, now it's time to make our image responsive so that it is functional for both tablets and mobile devices. Firstly, we'll select the tablet view. And then for the main section, we're going to set the minimum height to be 50% of the viewport height. And then we're going to adjust the horizontal and the vertical positions for each image.
Okay, let's take a second to preview what this looks like. Okay, that's not looking too bad, except I don't really like this part here where the two image boundaries don't quite gel together. So I'm going to set the containing sections overflow property under layout to be hidden. This trims any image overhang beyond the section's boundaries. Now that's a lot better. Right, moving on to mobile. In a similar way, I'm going to adjust the minimum height for the section and then adjust the horizontal and the vertical positions for the images. And that's pretty much all there is to it. We just want to make sure that everything is still okay for the desktop version as well as the tablet version. So let's firstly have a look at the desktop version. All still pretty cool. And then we'll take a look at the tablet version. Awesome. Now, if you found this video useful, please, if you could so kindly hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. And I do have more videos lined up just like this. So if you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. That's all everyone. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.